Tyrannosaurus fossils are found across a wide range of North America, but there are a lot of blank spots. Assuming their range was continent-wide, more should be found in more places, but the fossil record isn't great. Any new specimen in new places is a new data point to add to the whole picture of Tyrannosaurus. One of these data points has just been solidified, and it's in… Yellowstone? The breathtaking environs of Yellowstone National Park, located in most of Wyoming and bits of Idaho and Montana, are populated by all sorts of wildlife. Apex predators such as gray wolves, grizzly bears, black bears, and mountain lions, but they haven't always been the top predators in this wee chunk of land. Recent National Park Service paleontological resource inventories have proven that Yellowstone has an immense fossil record, ranging from the Cambrian to the last ice age, chock full of all sorts of apex predators. The Cambrian rocks contain weird worm world wonders. The Carboniferous and Permian rocks show a diverse cast of cartilaginous fish, and the Triassic and Jurassic brandish a cast of rapacious dinosaurian combatants. However, most of these records, as well as the largest, most powerful predator to ever walk the Earth, have been sadly missing from most interpretive resources. I mean, the natural resources already present, celebrated, and protected at the park is way more than enough, uh, but come on, what about the dinosaurs? John Paul Hotnett Paleontologist associated with the National Park System, New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science, and some stuff going on in DC, and his colleagues tells the tale of a unique fossil found in Yellowstone. They report that, during the 1960s, the USGS conducted geological mapping surveys of the Yellowstone National Park and Teton regions, which found late Cretaceous to Paleocene fossils in rock layers that would later be named the Haribel Formation and Pinion Conglomerate. Most of the vertebrate fossils encountered in these units were from outside the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, including partial dinosaur remains in the Harebell Formation and an isolated Ceratopsian tooth later identified as belonging to the hedge clipper head Leptoceratops from 150 feet above the base of the Pinion Conglomerate. However, while mapping the type section of the Harebell Formation near Mount Hancock in Yellowstone National Park in 1966, USGS geologist Joseph Leonard Waits, part of a field team under John D. Love, collected a shed tooth of a theropod dinosaur from a claystone bed as specimen W6618A. The specimen was identified initially by G. Edward Lewis of the USGS Paleontology and Stratigraphy Branch in Denver, Colorado when it had been given a new designation, D704, as an isolated tooth of a carnivorous dinosaur and referred it to the family Dinodontidae. Dinodontidae was a group name applied to a bunch of isolated and very fragmentary theropod dinosaur remains found across North America during the late 1800s and early 1900s that would go in and out of validity up until even the 1970s. Eventually, the scientific consensus found them to belong to the Tyrannosauridae, making them all probably representatives of already known dinosaurs. Communication between Lewis and Love, dated November of 1966, acknowledged that the miserable reptile tooth was significant as the first definitive dinosaur fossil to be discovered in Yellowstone National Park and would be important for future interpretation of the park's natural resources. This isolated tooth would later be mentioned only in a few publications on the Harebell Formation from the late 1960s to the mid-70s, 
A 1996 paper by J. D. Harris and colleagues was the only published record that corrected the identification of this tooth as belonging to a tyrannosaur, but without describing or figuring the specimen. This fossil occurrence has also largely been ignored in surveys of dinosaurian faunas from the Harebell Formation until now. The fossil resided in the Denver USGS Paleontology Collection until the collection's transfer to the Paleobiology Collections of the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in 2021, where it was given the catalog number USNMPAL768805. Now, the tooth has finally gotten its due with an October 2023 publication in the Fossil Record 9 issue of the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science Bulletin 94 by John Paul Hotnit, Matthew Carano, Vincent Santucci, Justin Tweet, and Christy Visaggi. The Yellowstone Tyrannosaur tooth was specifically collected from an approximately 3 meter thick olive drab gray and tan weathering claystone 700 meters above the base of the Harebell Formation on Big Game Ridge near the southern boundary of Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. The Harebell Formation overlies the Bacon Ridge sandstone and is capped by the Pinion Conglomerate. It is characterized by beds of sandstones, claystones, siltstones, and conglomerates. The depositional setting is considered to be primarily freshwater terrestrial with some incursions of marine or brackish waters, with streams flowing from east and northeast to the southeast into and across the Jackson Hole area from the Tarkey uplifts. Fossils are common throughout the Arabelle Formation, including abundant leaves and mollusks. Additional vertebrate specimens include an amyoid fish, a plethodontid salamander, alligatoroid teeth, ceratopsian teeth, ornithopod teeth, and a toothless hadrosaur jaw. Four toed theropod tracks collected from thick sandstone slabs are known from southeast of Yellowstone National Park in the Bridger Teton Wilderness Area. The age of the Harebell Formation was found to be Maastrichtian based on the fossils. Some paleomagnetic age data has been collected from the Harebell Formation in the Bridger Teton Wilderness Area, south of Yellowstone National Park. These paleomagnetic samples ranged from 70.3 to 68.2 million years ago, partly overlapping an early to late Maastrichtian age. This date range makes the Harebell Formation slightly older than the Hell Creek, Lance, Scholard, Frenchman, and other units containing most Tyrannosaurus material. And here's the fossil. Yeah, not much to look at. It's a single shed tyrannosaurid premaxillary tooth missing the very tip. Preserved crown height is 18.6 millimeters with a width of 9.6 millimeters. It's slightly recurved, has a slight D-shaped cross section, and has slightly offset toothed serrations or carina. Based on the size, this tooth most likely came from a juvenile or young adolescent individual. The tooth has enough features preserved for the authors to label it as a Tyrannosaurid, but not specifically Tyrannosaurus, however it pretty much has to belong to Tyrannosaurus based on where it was found and how old it was, you just can't validly label it directly as from a Tyrannosaurus rex specifically. This tooth is potentially the first record of Tyrannosaurus from the Maastrichtian Harebell Formation. This would add to the known geologic distribution and stratigraphic range of Tyrannosaurus in Western North America, which currently spans the Denver, Ferris, Frenchman Hell Creek, Havlina, Laramie, Lance, McRae, Northhorn, Scollard, and Willow Creek formations. However, further Tyrannosaur specimens will be needed from the Harebell Formation to fully validate this occurrence. As the author team writes, there is strong potential for the Harebell Formation within Yellowstone National Park to yield more paleontological data through additional future surveys, which would enrich the knowledge of late Cretaceous life in this underdocumented region of Wyoming. A preliminary National Park Service paleontological assessment survey in 2022 in the Big Game Ridge region documented fossil resources within the area, but the majority of these were plants and mollusks. Dinosaur fossils found outside of Yellowstone National Park in the Harebell Formation include indeterminate remains of hadrosaurs and ceratopsians, and these forms could also be found within the park. What is currently certain is that this little miserable reptile tooth demonstrates the power of in-depth and determined natural resource inventory work to reveal forgotten knowledge and natural treasures that enrich our national narrative of ancient life in the United States. 
It seems befitting that the first dinosaur fossil to be identified and described from our first national park likely belongs to our nation's most iconic and popular dinosaur genus, Tyrannosaurus. Almost makes me feel something. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.